When a new FTK gets a chance to join into the meta, you gotta take a second and go, wow, this actually does have a rippling effect across the board. Make sure you guys smash the living crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more Oz content. So we have an updated tier list here out of this uh, last little week or so here for the OCG. This time, showcasing, well, I mean, your S tier is pretty much what we've expected. Um, we still got the Fire King, Flamberge, and Friends still sticking around at the top. Yeah, that's going to continue to be a very consistent creature. And then, of course, Tenpai and the Rescue Ace Fiendsmith build that has just been a massive creature in the OCG. Uh, a tier, we have Flamberge and the Fiendsmith, and then just regular old snake eyes. B tier, we have the Illusion and Friends with Fiendsmith. And then, of course, we still have Memento, Ubel, the Tachyon FTK, and, of course, we have the Melodious Pendulum deck as well. Down in C tier, we have the Unchained with Ubel, Runic, Infernoid, and it would also appear Melodious with Flamberge. And then we have Code Talkers, with Legatia, Voiceless Voice, and Salad down in the lowest half of the tier. Now, this is quite interesting just to get the chance to kind of analyze here and look at how their meta is kind of progressing, at least from the viewpoints that are being looked at here for what are considered the top decks. And, you know, I'm genuinely impressed to see how the OCG's meta has kind of evolved. It's a lot more playable than ours. Or is it? Let's pass it over to deck list. Our first list here is going to be the standard Snake Eyes Diabell Star package. And to be honest with you, not a lot has really changed. The OCG still has Lingaribo. Uh, the Double Promethean Princess has definitely had a huge move in on a lot of the territory here. And I also see they are playing Rise to Full Heights. You also see that they are sighting the good old assembled nightingale down there as well to kind of get that free value that you want. And of course, Heavy Storm still being a fantastic card for this deck to use. Next up, we have Tenpai Dragon Gas Gas Turbo with actual built-in Raikekis. I love the fact that this deck gets a chance to play these cards and just be able to punish the opponent with them. Like, it, it's actually hilarious. Still do see the Samurai Destroyer there, the Moonlight Black Rose as well, and Ruddy Rose. You're just, just Black Rose Turbo, effectively. And, of course, if you go first, you can Kaiser Coliseum lock your opponent on one monster, and they're just forced to look at you and go, uh, why? Why are you this good? Well, Yu-Gi-Oh! Okay, so this is our Rescue Ace Turbo deck here. You still see that we are adapting the Fiendsmith stuff still into this deck, getting the free extra bodies on the field so that you can Link Climb, which is kind of stupid to me. Also, this deck getting access to Beatrice. Well, you gotta appreciate just kind of the free effort that they've allowed this deck to kind of actually undergo and be this very, very, very strong competitor. And this is all with Emergency Limit to 1, by the way. Next up is standard good stuff, the Fiendsmith package built into this. Um, I'm really surprised to see if they underestimate this deck so low. Um, honestly, I also see that we are signing the uh, Galaxy Karibo friend down there so that we don't lose to the random Tempai Dragon bully in the room. Uh, and we are doing the top hat hair so you can bring out the Azure Rune. So you can go ahead and uh, stop any BS that your opponent might be doing. I'm not going to lie, I've enjoyed the Azarune play. It's pretty good. All right, next up here, we have, wow, this is just basic flambers with the chicken games built in here with two original Sinful Spoils. I see that we were feeling dangerous today to actually warrant a chance to want to play multiples of original Sinful Spoils. That's definitely not something I want to be doing, but... I guess the logic is, you know, you can have it on the follow-up for the next turn in case something happens, but uh, the other builds do feel infinitely better than this. Uh, next up is the Diablaze Illusion good stuff with the Barrier Statue actually built in the main deck. I guess we do get a little bit more Barrier Statue uh, love out of this now, that we can actually, you know, have extra Fiendsmith value to kind of help with the consistency of this. And that's a pretty major thing to think about out here. You know, in, in terms of what your deck is capable of doing, um, you 
I have so many different cool lines of play. I think this is by far my favorite build for what we've been seeing. All right, next up here is Memento. Man, the OCG loves this deck. The fact that this deck is just kind of a lot of one ofs for the extra bad names, and then it just turbos on the focus of getting to the big bad boss monster, and then your big fusion can actually search for your field spell. Yeah, it's actually worth looking at now. Um, in terms of, you know, what this deck does against the, the rest of the meta, it, it's got to do with the trap cards being able to basically roll the negates and go, wow, you bell looks super sad. And the fact that, you know, you have the, the chaos core in here, um, still not playing the third form. I still love the third form. And then, of course, the entire deck is just revolving around Nightmare Throne Go. Um, you do see the blue tiers down there in the side deck helping us out to get that little extra burn damage in where we can get it. And, of course, another culprit of Beatrice Turbo. Um, outside of that, there's nothing really too crazy to say about this. And then our last list on this tier, uh, we have the Catapult Turtle FTK. So basically what ends up happening here is you basically get to reveal the, uh, C90, the C101, search for the Catapult Turtle, and then Seti is like full combo just to kill your opponent. Uh, it's actually kind of crazy. Uh, though this build doesn't have the extra cards really needed to do it, but hey, you know what? You just got to get, you know... Number 100 beamed out and Draguxion to kind of get the whole combo going. And it's mission accomplished. This deck is really scary. All right. Next up here, we have the Melodious with the Electromite and friends. And I'm not going to lie to you. This, uh, this build is kind of interesting just for kind of how you're looking at the course of the meta. Obviously, Electromite helps this deck out so much. That's why the TCG can never really get the chance to enjoy this deck. But, you know, I also have Borolode Savage for the Negate. So I, I understand what they're actually going through with this. Next up here, we have Standard Ubel Unchained. Of course, they have the extra Shyamas. And it amazes me that this deck just does not perform quite as well. I guess maybe bulking down too much on the Unchained cards has kind of led this deck astray? I don't know, maybe it's a consistency thing. Maybe trying to put in Abominations, Prisons, and things just hinders this deck's success rate too much. Well, that's something I've found interesting. You know, this build is so low on the totem pole, but, huh, okay. Uh, next up is Runic. Oh, boy, they still have triple card demise. You know, you trade in the fountain for the chance just to get the card demises up and running, get that free infinite draw power, and you are good to go. Uh, honestly, this deck is a menace to the meta. I perfectly understand the craziness that we've got going on here. This build's also playing Torrential Tributes, which is extremely wild to me that they're getting away with playing that form of Field Wipe, but their meta kind of needs it. All right, next up here we have Noids. Once again, must be nice to have triple reasoning, triple, uh, you know, monster gate with the double that grass looks greener. We also have the dark fusions built in here so you can get the fusion sub going. And of course, I mean, you just toss in the card destruction onto the pile and just kind of laugh at your opponent at the end of the sugar coated rainbow, right? Like, no problem whatsoever. You gotta love just what this deck's power ceiling can actually bring to the table. Like, it's just so crazy when this deck actually goes. Uh, next up is our Flamberge, our, our Snake Eyes Melodious. Like, this should be a lot better than it actually looks, right? Like, this should be on par with the rest of the stuff. You know, you're just doing all this kind of turbo out the Avalos and maybe a couple other, like, sub things along the way. But, I don't know. The deck honestly just feels extremely weak for its generated end board. And it's actually really sad because the other Flamberge Dragon decks in the OCG just do things infinitely better. So, you gotta love consistency, I guess. Next up is the Cyverse adding Nestor Pile. Once again, the OCG has Circular, so it's kind of allowed this deck to kind of hold on as a Firewall Turbo deck. I, nothing really wrong with having a Firewall Turbo deck be present in the meta, but you gotta understand that if you're looking at this deck and you're like, oh yes, you know, I'm gonna go play Code Talker, this is the base for me you want to go at. You know, it used to be make the boss monster turbo, but not anymore. You just want to be able to use any firewall dragon that you need for any situation to set up and go. Ah, we have the Whitewood Centurion. We've been following this deck for a very long time. Um, I still love watching what this deck can do. Obviously not having King Calamity, I think, has hurt this deck a lot. They've also got it out like the Toy Soldier stuff 
from the White Woods cards, even though those cards are extremely good when they need to be. But a lot of things to kind of consider here in terms of your overall deck builds. You know, do you want to continue down the path of playing this or do you want to test out the Toy Soldier stuff? But either build does work. Ah, the current state of Voiceless Voice is in shambles. This is a train wreck. But looking at this deck and just seeing how things have kind of held up here, I am not the most impressed. Honestly, with no new support, um, the deck's kind of just been locked into its current state. It's not to say that the deck is necessarily terrible, but if you're attempting to play this into future metas, you've got a lot to, you know, hope goes in your favor or you don't get blown out by Fiendsmith combo. And then we have Salaman great for you today. And honestly, Salad has been pretty straightforward. They still have the Kaiser Coliseum, so they can actually, you know, go up in the link for activate Kaiser at the end of their combo and then proceed to OTK on the follow-up turn. They, they have a lot of stupidness available to them that I don't foresee that really changing anytime soon. Consistency is a heck of a creature. Um, well, that is everything that we have for this. Please, if you comment down below, tell me what you guys think, and I'll see your beautiful faces back here in day, guys. Peace. Patrons, thank you. Uh. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.